All right, everybody, so I'm Matt Snyder, and I'm the Director of Communications here at First Baptist Decatur, and I'm sitting with Dr. David Jordan, who's our senior pastor, and we're wanting to do something new and something different. Uh, this is an experiment. We're all about trying new things at the church, and so I'm sitting down with David because we want to talk a little more about Sunday's sermon and have him unpack it a little bit more, uh, tap into some things that maybe he didn't get to say that he wanted to say, and help you process it if you've listened to it and want to go deeper. And so we're going to sit down and talk. But uh, to start out, what was your sermon about in one sentence or less? Oh, wow, one sentence or less. Well, the, the overall focus was the wise men. And what is this whole thing of, of wisdom and dealing with the difficulties of life? So it was entitled Trouble, The Trouble with Herod Part 2. And this whole thing of, of how do we deal with the journey from uh, where the wise men were to where they needed to go? How do we deal with our journeys of life, uh, processing life and faith, dealing with difficulties? So part of what we said in the sermon was this journey of life is a great metaphor. The wise men were traveling, we're traveling, we've got this pilgrimage of faith that we need to take seriously. And so, um, I've gone way more than one sentence. I really well, no, <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, so the journey of life, how do you, how do you do this thing? Yeah. And so that's sort of the overarching question. And so the metaphor of the wise men is a beautiful, beautiful yeah. way of thinking about, okay, well, they're called wise men for a reason. What, what's going on here? So they're traveling and the, the metaphor of the journey yeah. Is, is really the background for this. And, and you had five kind of guiding principles for mm -hmm. when, we're, when we're walking the journey of life. And yeah. what were they? Do yeah, you sure, of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, so when you're traveling with people, you, you need to realize that, you know, you got to figure out how to interact and act with folks. And otherwise you, you drive people crazy. Yeah. So uh, the, the first point is kindness is contagious. And the whole, the whole idea of being with people on a trip whether you're on a bus or an airplane or hiking, uh, you want to be kind. And being kind helps other people want to be kind. You treat people with dignity. You treat people like they matter. And they treat you in the same way. So yeah. kindness is contagious. Absolutely. Well, kindness is the first step, but then you also have to be kind of flexible because inevitably you can be kind, but things happen. So we said kindness is contagious. Flexibility is helpful. And being able to just sort of roll with the flow. And, and so we can kind of imagine these magi going along this journey and things didn't work out. They probably took a wrong turn here or there. And, yeah. and so to be kind, but also to say, oh, that's okay. We'll figure it out. We'll get back on the road. Yeah. So flexibility is a great thing. I had, uh, you said that on Sunday and I was thinking, uh, when, I, when I did the mission trip a long time ago, I had a friend on a team that I was with. And she said, we can't be flexible, we have to be fluid. Because if you're flexible, mm. you'll still break. If you're fluid, you go with the flow. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh, David should have said that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I didn't want to correct yeah. In the <laughs> middle of the service. No, I'm just but it's, fluid, fluid is good. Flu fluid is good. Yeah. Flexibility is also important because yeah. it means you're still attuned to some kind of structure or pattern or path. Yeah. And I think that that's yeah. important. So. Well, the key, the, I love the word flexibility for this reason. In athletics, I mean, you know, people really focus on flexibility, football players, oh, with yeah. all the controversy football gets, um, you can really prolong your, your life as a, a football player if you're more flexible. Yeah. And you, you keep yourself from being injured if you're able to be flexible. So I think right. that, that it's true on a trip, uh, fluidity is good, flexibility, whatever word we use, this yeah. idea of being able to sort of just stretch a little more, be a little more patient, um, so kindness is contagious. Flexi flexibility, helpful. flexibility is helpful. Um, humility is vital, and it's one thing to be kind for the sake of kindness. It's another thing to be flexible. Pretty soon, you can only be so flexible. Your patience gets worn thin. Humility is such a great tool to realize. Biblically, I think there's this wisdom of of uh, we walk humbly with God in the sense that you know. My way is not necessarily the only way. 
uh, right. God is working in you like God is working in me. And so the, the perspective, the wisdom of humility, is this, this real sacred perspective of being able to rec recognize, yeah, something good is happening in your life, even though I may not agree with all the things that you're standing for right now. Yeah. Especially right now, I mean, we, we were talking earlier yeah. about the political divides and the sociological uh, difficulty we're having right now. And, and I think uh, to step back, take a deep breath, and uh, this, this gift of humility, of really trying to nurture in ourselves, God is not finished with me, God's not finished with you, and we're going to figure this thing out. Well, yeah, I mean, in there. I, humility listens too, and I feel yeah. like in our political climate right now, it's really important to listen to one another. Yeah, that's and a good point. there's a lot of people talking at one another, mm. but not speaking with each other, mm -hmm. and they're two very different things. Yeah. And so, yeah. I think it's really well, important. Well, it's a deep word, because really, what you say I may completely disagree with, yeah. and I may it may make me go crazy what you're saying. Humility really goes a little deeper and says, "I wonder why you're saying that. What is it in you that feels like that's true? Why do you believe that? And how can you help me get a little closer to where you are in the sense of understanding your story?" Yeah. So for me, humility is is really respecting a person enough to want to hear a little more about who they are and where they come from. Oh, yeah. And we still may disagree, but at least I'm able to have a little better sense of your humanity and what yeah. God is doing in you, because I've heard a little bit about where you come from, uh, why you think the way you think. And that's the problem, I think, most of the time now. Social media doesn't laugh for that depth. Mm -hmm. You're just sort of flying off the handle yeah. because what this person says online drives you crazy, and you have no interest and learning about them because they just made you mad yeah. <laughs> and you want to treat kind with kind yeah and so anyway that I think so kindness is contagious but it can only take you so far flexibility is helpful humility is vital and then the the next point is this this whole business of um, for me when we're humble we also begin to discover this this treasure of gratitude so uh, gratitude is this, this gift where, uh, I said in the sermon, um, the discipline of just stopping at some point during the day, every day, and think of one thing you're thankful for. And so, I mean, really, uh, gratitude is one of those things that, uh, th the way I put it in the sermon was gratitude is transformational. Yeah. So but it is. So humility, that's yeah. Put it. I mean, and transformational. That's, that sometimes that can be a little cliche of a word now. Transformation and transformational, but um, it's appropriate because it can it changes everything in the way oh, yeah. your attitude can can be altered by just stopping and thinking about what you have to be thankful for. And um, so I feel like while while humil humility is vital, that sort of plants the seed of this. This it's gracious building spirit. gratitude inside of your right. So life. yeah. So so gratitude is transformational. It, it it can change the way you act and interact with people. And then the final thing that that I feel like um, the magi really sort of embody in this story, this pilgrimage from this faraway foreign place that had nothing to do with Judaism. Uh, this this wisdom of recognizing that God is doing something different in the world, and we want to be a part of that. It, it generates this idea of generosity. So they are going from this faraway place and they're bringing gifts. And so I love, I mean, it's got all kinds of metaphorical levels to oh, it of, of what the spices and the gold and all that symbolizes. But it also is a really valuable lesson of the power of generosity, of wanting to, to give of ourselves and give of what we have. And so, and I think gratitude is a natural precursor to generosity. You, you're grateful and you want to do something with your gratitude and it's a, it's a good thing to give yeah. gifts and, and give of yourself. And So the Magi are wise in their, their gift giving and so they're, they're going in the direction of Jesus, which also I love as a metaphor that, oh, that was good. Th this journey of, of not knowing exactly where you're going but following a star to yeah. go in the direction of Jesus. Not knowing where you're going but Kind of not knowing what you're looking for. Yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. you just, yeah. you're like, something happened. Yeah. And we've read it in the sky. Yeah. And it's that way. Yeah. 
and yeah. it, that's 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 a lot about like living with faith. Yeah. And I feel like that's how some of these these principles really apply to our journeys going mm-hmm. through life. Is that yeah. they're good things to kind of bench on, right? It's like mm-hmm. being humble, being grateful, being generous along the way. Like yeah. it's super important. Yeah. And and I, I had you were saying talking about gratitude and generosity. I had a friend who used to always say, gratitude isn't something you have, it's something you give. It's like mm. one spills into the other. Yeah. And I think that, that yeah. that's a powerful way of looking at the relationship between those two things. So. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I, I brought it on Sunday, and I think it's valuable. A couple of people commented on this after the service, that the, the root of generosity is also the root of Genesis. Ooh, so the, yeah. the, the first book of the Bible has the same root word to it, and this, this idea of beginning, that there's something... Uh, really elemental about generosity that it it, it begins something new and beautiful in yeah. you. and so I think this gener- uh, uh, generosity Genesis um, this this the beginning point of the human journey in Genesis and in the Bible uh, is is elemental to this journey that the wise men are, are having in the direction of Jesus yeah. so these are when you're traveling together, when you're on the journey of life, when you're doing this pilgrimage of faith, uh, these these five elements I think are pretty key oh, yeah. to, to just sort of stay focused and keep on going. But then the next piece of the puzzle, you may want to ask the question, but yeah, well, I'll just, just keep going. That's fine. <laughs> so, but, you know, they go through Jerusalem. So yeah. um, the, they're going from this faraway place, and I love the, the richness of the way Matthew puts this in the second chapter that these guys are kind of off the edge of the map. I mean, they're, they're, they've got nothing to do with the story until they decide to be a part of the story. Right. And they make the decision to go be a part of this faith journey. And on the way, inevitably, with, with all of us, we have this encounter at some point on the, often multiple encounters, but this, uh, however you want to put the the, the metaphorical phrasing, difficulty or trouble, or uh, we're going to bump into something that causes us a problem. And in the case of the wise men, it's Herod. Yeah. Uh, he's this guy, that uh, historical figure, and in part one of The Trouble with Herod, we talked maybe a little too much about <laughs> the historical context and interaction with Cleopatra no, and Mark it's, good, it's good material. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool stuff, and, and of course most church people I had tons of people coming up to me afterwards going, I had no idea that this actually was connected to Caesar yeah. Augustus and Mark Antony and and Cleopatra and all these historical events in the Roman Empire. Yeah. Well, Herod was intimately woven into all that stuff. It was a very messy time, and he really developed key coping strategies that are very apropos today, as we were talking about <laughs> our, our political environment right now. Yeah. He became a, a perfect autocrat in the sense that he played people off against each other. He was a narcissist, totally egocentric, and, and everything about his reign uh, centered on keeping power yeah. and, and maintaining this control over what was going on. So when the, when the Magi enter into Jerusalem, and as, as Kelsey said yesterday, you gotta wonder how wise these guys really were to have gone to Herod <laughs> and realized, saying, hey, there's a new king in town. We'd love to go worship him. Can you tell us where yeah. he is? Kind of a bad move. <laughs> they didn't think that one through. <laughs> yeah. so, so Herod's reaction is, is pretty horrible. But um, the Magi sort of get their, get their act together. Once they visit Jesus, they give their gifts. Um, the, the whole dynamic of that story, I think, has additional wisdom for us in our journey. And that is they did come to their senses. They sort of recognized what we said was the warning signs. I mean, there are times in all of our journeys, whether it's in personal interaction, in social settings, where you begin to be aware of the, the warnings, the dangers, that maybe these people aren't folks I need to be hanging around. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember all of us had that experience in high school, probably. <laughs> middle school, high I school. I had that in middle school. College, <laughs> That's for sure. college where yeah. you want so badly to be a part of this group. And then you start realizing that nah, this group may not be who yeah. I really am called to be. And because you end up becoming the people you're with. And right. so you want to surround right. yourself with good people. Right. Yeah. And so this whole cult of Herod was just pretty scary stuff. But the people that bought into it sort of bought into the 
the power structure and the scary things and the, the Magi were smart enough to realize we want no part of that. So part of what we said on Sunday was they, they, they realized he's not going to come around to where we are. Yeah. There's no reason to have this fight. And Jesus later uh, in the New Testament says there are times where you just have to brush the dust off your feet and go on to the next town. Yeah. And so the, the wise men were smart enough to recognize the warning signs, see the dangers, and realize we don't have to stick around here. Uh, we don't have to be a part of this. We've got other things to do. Mm-hmm. And they, they sort of drop off the radar screen from that point, but the, the wisdom that I think they, they embody is this idea of, you know, we can go our own way. Yeah. We, can, we can do our own journey. We don't have to be a part of that, that nastiness. Well, and I, I feel like that translates well to where all of us are starting off a new year. It's yeah. like yeah. we can look back on where we've been and then think ahead to where we're going. Mm. And if where we're rooted isn't a healthy place that's going to get us from mm. point A to point B the way we want, yeah. uh, it's okay to reevaluate and yeah. move in a different direction. It's okay to say this group of people that I hang out with, it's maybe unhealthy. Maybe I should move somewhere else. Or right. I've been working in this terrible environment for five plus years. It's time that I move on. Yeah. And I, I yeah. feel like that's, that's kind of a way of taking this message and putting it in the context of real life yeah. for, for a lot of us. For, yeah. you know, and how do, we, how do we move forward to where we want to go? Yeah. And, it, and it's okay to evaluate, reevaluate. It's okay to move forward right. and go a different way. And, and you, could, you could even do it sort of, it's a recalibration of the journey. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, they probably recognized you know, it probably wasn't a good idea to go to visit here. We could have asked directions from somebody else. <laughs> could have stopped that quick trip on the way. <laughs> and, uh, out the, yeah. So it's kind of like the, the, the GPS recalculating. You, yeah, know, you make yeah. a wrong turn, well, there's still another way to get to where you need right. to go. It's just a different road. And so the, the Magi, are, I think that part of the wisdom they, they give us, and, and Matthew kind of implies, is... Um, you know, sometimes on the on the journey of life, when you run into these difficulties, when you have these troubles, uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It can be an increase of your wisdom, a, a, an enriching of your experience, but you can also recal- recalibrate yeah. uh, and and go in a different direction. And there's another way home. And so I I love the way that Matthew just sort of briefly puts it. And they went home by a different route. Yeah. <laughs> just kind of graciously so, says, and they changed their minds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's Recalculating. Really that's really good. Yeah. Well, th- I hope this was really helpful to you all. It's been helpful to me good. about that time. Um, is there anything else you would like to add? Any resources, any places people can check out for more information? Can they pester, pester you, like send you an email? What can uh, they sure. Actually, they'll send you an email. And you they pass will send me. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but well, uh, we put we put on the uh, the weekly update. Yep. There are two books that I really enjoy for part one. They also kind of inform part two of the trouble with Herod, and that is uh, Stacy Schiff's book on Cleopatra, which is really cool, and it's also sort of informative for Luke, especially, um, really kind of lifts up the role of women both in the Gospel of oh, Luke awesome. and in yeah. Acts, and there are a lot of scholars now who are saying that Cleopatra was sort of this epitome of a strong woman that a lot of men in those days were totally intimidated by. And and so they said bad stuff about her, when in fact, in Stacey Schiff's uh, historical research, she was awesome. I mean, she yeah. was doing all kinds of cool stuff. Spoke nine languages fluently, learned Latin as an adult, make it, making it her tenth language, which she didn't include in the tenth, nine. Tenth language. <laughs> because she didn't feel like she was fluent in Latin. Uh, but, so she's the competitor to Herod. And, uh, so Richardson's book on Herod the Great was the other one we had on yeah. the, the bo- website. Yeah, and both of those are linked on the sermon page on the website. Yeah, so. and, and gives great background to the coming of Jesus and the, the environment that really the wise men would have encountered, the shepherds were a part of, the, the early family of Jesus in Nazareth would have been surrounded by. And then as Jesus grows to an adult, Herod's sons... Uh, Herod Antipas is, is Herod the Great's son, and he's controlling the area right around Nazareth, yeah. 
where Jesus is growing up. So it's very interesting and, and gives us historical context. Sounds That's interesting. Very, very helpful. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, again, those resources are linked on the sermons page on the website, so you can look at those up. But um, hope this was helpful to you, uh, recapping the sermon, kind of walking through some things and unpacking it a little bit. Uh, if you want to learn more, you can go to the website, fbcdecatur.com. If you want to listen to these sermons, it's at fbcdecatur.com forward slash sermons. You can also subscribe to our sermons podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. And uh, we update everything on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, so check those things out. Uh, have a good day, everybody. Thanks, man.